How are you guys doing today? This is your boy Mike Fallon with another episode of The Buttery Show. I'm dropping in today from Sister Cinema to do a collab with the channel. Uh, we are here at Roboy to Roboy Robo Toy Fest 2022. Sorry for my English, guys. I'm here with living legend James Pax. How you doing today, brother? Always good, always good. Yeah. I'm pretty good. Yeah, I'm out here at the Robo Toy Festival. You know, it's my uh, first time back in the USA. In the last seven years, I was been away in Asia, but now I'm back for good, and I'm glad to meet you here. Yeah, you, Mike me, me too, bro. Yeah. Like, for everybody that that's not familiar, this man right here is one was probably one of the most penultimate films in cinema history, in my opinion. Now, with Big Trouble Little China, I, I mean, I ain't got to tell you because you're in the film. For those that aren't as hip to the game. It was one of the first ever like major films with like a major Asian cast that weren't stereotypical and were actually on the forefront of the story. So I have a question. After all these decades, how does it feel to, to, to still see the relevance of the film and seeing, seeing how the fan base will not go away and just keeps growing and growing? You're very right about that. I was amazed myself. It's been 35 years since the film was first made, I believe it was in 86, mm -hmm. you know, with John Carpenter and, and uh, Kurt Russell. But the fan base just kept on growing. And only last year, I decided to start my own uh, a fan club. It's called the Lightning or Big Trouble in Little China Fan Club. Mm -hmm. And ever since, I'm getting more and more fans around the world. I even have my own memorabilia website and everything just because of the support uh, from the fans. You are very right. This is the first ever Hollywood-made Kung Fu action movie. And John Carpenter, I got to tip my head for him. He is the ultimate director that really introduces Chinese Kung Fu into the American movie making. I think he's just as important as Bruce because Bruce is the one that raised the level of Chinese Kung Fu. Yeah and the level of the Chinese race to the attention of the entire world back in the 80s. And John Carpenter just carried on that tradition and that legendary uh, Chinese Kung Fu, yeah. you know, that Bruce have left off. Yeah. And John picked it up and made this historical movie, Big Trouble in Little China, because back then nobody believed that a white director like John would be able to come up with a movie like that. Yeah. And it was legendary, the story, was original and it was funny, it was full of action, but one thing, there is no violence. It's all fun action with no violence, that's what I love about it, yeah. you know. And so therefore, till today, the kids, the adults, even the new uh, teenager and the kids today, they can watch it because their parents say, you gotta watch this movie because it's so healthy and so much fun, yeah. you know. Yeah, well, the reason, I, I mean, and you can, you know, you can correct me or add on to what I'm saying here. I feel, based on what you're saying as well, if you, if you look at the film objectively, it was like the first, one of the first major Hollywood films that started to end the racial stereotyping of Asian characters and actually started making more Asian actors look as equals and not just a stereotype because there's been like, there was like too much um, stereotypical representation, like Breakfast at Tiffany's and stuff of that nature, which was this negative and, and try to put uh, Asian characters in a box. But with Big Trouble Little China, from like my experience and people I've talked to, they feel it was like one of the first films where like they felt like actual 3D characters and not one note people that, uh, not, not like one note characters that just filled up space. And, and so when it came to the heroes and villain side, so how do you feel about that, that aspect of it? I, I, I definitely think that Big Trouble serves that purpose. The, the good guys, the white guy at Kurt Russell plays, and yet the Asian guy, they have a sidekick that's played play, play by Asian guy. And then the bad guys are me, Carter Wong, and Peter Kwan, you know. And we actually don't have much say in the movie, and yet we become the legendary Storms, you know, which is just amazing the way he, he and the writer created all these Asian characters. Easily memorable, mem memorable and also, and, and the good thing is, I didn't even have a line in the whole movie. You know, when I first took the job, I was asking my agent, hey, you know what? I mean, uh, I'm amazed that there, there's no line in the lightning character, but my agent said, you got to take this because John is directing it. So then I did it without really knowing how big this movie is going to be. 
But comparing Big Trouble to a lot of the uh, the new TV series uh, like uh, the Warriors or the Kung Fu, which I think they're all good, you know, for their own purpose, and it actually really opens up the field now. Now the Asians are becoming uh, uh, more prominent in the society, in the American society, and yet also the Asian uh, audience are supporting it, yeah. watching it. Uh, recently, I one great example, I went to see a movie called uh, uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Man, bro, you're preaching to the choir. I love that movie. You love that movie. Well, yeah. that's great. I went to see it with a friend of mine, and uh, it definitely is different. And that just proved that a movie can be what it is with all the Asian cast. You know, Michelle Yeoh is probably the biggest actress right now. And with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, yep. you know, and a couple of other Asian characters. Very small cast, and yet it did already 40 million domestic in the box office. Mm. That just proved that Hollywood movie don't always have to be made with just black and white, or the Latino. It can be just an all Asian cast or a mixed cast, yes. which I think is the best, because later I will tell you more about this. It's called The Shaolin Warrior 7, and this is just a comic book cover, but I am looking to make it into a TV series. Mm. So this is gonna be my next big project. Of course, Big Trouble started my career, and my next big project is going to be Shaolin Warrior 7. Well, I mean, you know, when it, when it comes to trajectory of how things work, I mean, from what can be seen and tracked, it's really like Big Trouble of China, like, basically had to crawl for everything else after you guys to run. Because it's like, I mean, it's been said online, and people know what I'm talking about, referring, is that your character, it was felt to be the inspiration for Raiden from Mortal Kombat. Right. And then from there, we beget other franchises after that to where now we're with Shang-Chi. And it's just like this whole, this whole time gap from like from from the from Big Trouble in China to now can all be tracked back to how representation, like you're saying, is important. But how this it's like you guys were the trailblazers. You you set the path for everybody else to come through to where we get everything like everything everywhere all at once. But basically, all are in your guys's you know, uh, not trajectory, but like basically the like in your trail of like what you guys they set forth for everybody to follow. Yeah. I, I definitely think, you know, Big Trouble did that. And now the uh, Everything Everywhere, the Shang-Chi, mm -hmm. and probably the next one is gonna be Shaolin Warriors. So what's Shaolin Warriors, uh, like the concept and the synopsis of it? Okay, well Shaolin Warriors is definitely Chinese mythical story based on historical facts. All about Shaolin Temple Warriors. Mm -hmm. But this time it's not gonna be just Chinese. It's going to be five Chinese and two Americans, mm. and which is going to be a feature movie. But on top of that, we also have a TV pilot uh, that we are looking to shoot sometime this year, and hopefully it will be start airing uh, by fall. Mm. I can't really talk too much about it, but yeah. it will bring back the memory of what Bruce Lee had left off, the real Chinese Kung Fu, the real Chinese Kung Fu. Wing Chun to Shaolin Warriors, all different style, animal kung fu, huh? and all of that will be brought back to the big and small screens with the best Asian, um, Asian actors from China and also the best American actors. There will be at least two prominent American actors that's going to be involved playing one of the seven warriors. Yeah. And I'm the director, I'm the producer, I wrote it, and I will be uh, directing it. And hopefully we'll get a lot of our Hollywood actors, black and white, everybody, Caucasians and you know African Americans, to be involved in it. Because I always believe yeah. in embracing each other yes. with no racial difference. That everybody is on the same platform. If we all work together and love each other and support each other, we'll have a better world to live. Man. Right? Yeah then there's no racial difference, no racial hate, and, 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 all, and all of that, really, I believe. And what I believe in is you using traditional Chinese Shaolin Kung Fu against violence. I believe there's just too much violence now in America, you know? And we need something different.
So I want to create a show that is about action kung fu against violence. And these warriors are going to save the world from peril, from terrorists and many other things. And that's what I advocate, is peace to the world with Kung Fu, with a positive mes message that everyone should be working together as one. I, I mean, you said it, it, it can't be better said than how you stated it. So I just want to say thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. Like genuinely, like, like, like what you and John and everybody else did has just been so impactful. And it's like we wouldn't have what we have today without people like you. So I just want to, I just want to, like the like saying goes, I want to give you your flowers while you're here. Thank you. Thank for you. sure. Thank you. So, and where can people find you online and, 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 all, your, and all your social media? Yeah, right. Actually, I have my own fan club. It's very simple. Lightning of Big Trouble in Little China, James Pax, and that is my uh, fan chat room. And I also have a uh, Instagram, just James Pax underscore lightning. And then I have a podcast called Kung Fu Legends by James Pax. That's on YouTube, in which I interview all the top Asian uh, uh, actors, Kung Fu actors, including the one that we just talked about, Kung Fu Hustle, Chu Chi Ling, the ring guy. Remember, he has eight different rings you know, on his arms. First one Wu. <laughs> uh, that's right. That was, what, 15, 20 years ago, but now he's in his 80s. He just came on my show, and I interviewed him on Kung Fu Legends, so you got to turn on, find it, and, and, uh, and just find him there. And I'm going to be introducing many new upcoming action stars, like from Thailand, Simon Cook. He's going to be the next Tony Ja. And he's going to be in Shaolin Warriors as well. Sen Gao is an American Chinese from China. He's three times All-American Karate Champion and many, many others. And of course, we're looking to invite Jason Scott Lee to be on our show as well. So you got to follow it since I know you, you like so much about Kung Fu. Oh, you, you damn skippy. All right, guys, this is Mike. Uh, thank you for enjoying this episode of The Buttery Show. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Thank you for watching this Buttery Show interview. Shout out again to James Pax for doing this interview with us. He's such a cool dude. And like always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe.